In this video, we are going to be talking about degenerative disc disease. Degenerative disc disease is a term that is used to denote problems that happen to the discs that are in the vertebral column as a result of degeneration. When we say degeneration, we mean the effect of aging that affects the spine and slowly lead to the damage of the tissues, damage to the integrity of the tissues and the structure of the tissues that are part of the discs that line the vertebral column. So when we talk about degenerative disc disease, this is something that happens because of the aging process. And everyone above the age of say 50 or 60 has already gone through a process of degeneration in the discs. What does this lead to? Degenerative disc disease leads to problems associated with the region of the vertebra and the types of discs that are undergoing the process of degeneration. When the degeneration happens in the neck, when the vertebral column of the neck and the discs that are associated with the cervical vertebrae undergo the degenerative changes, people suffer from conditions that affect the neck, shoulders, hands. This could be in the form of pain, it could be numbness, it could be weakness, and pain that radiates to, from the neck down to the hand. It can even be manifesting as weakness in the fingers and so on and so forth. So these sort of symptoms happen when the degenerative disc disease happens in the neck. When the degeneration is happening in the lower part of the vertebrae, especially in the lumbar vertebrae, it leads to symptoms of pain in the back which also radiates to the lower part of the body through the nerves that supply the legs. This is very often leading to sciatica, which refers to the pain that radiates to the lower limbs through the sciatic nerve. So things that happen with the degeneration that cause these symptoms is something that is to be understood. There are different structures that are associated with the discs. Number one, the disc itself. With the process of aging, the water content in the disc starts reducing and that condition is known as dehydration. Dehydration is the first step in the degenerative disc disease. And with progression in the rate of degeneration, in the, in the rate of dehydration, the disc loses its elasticity. And when it is subjected to vertical pressure through travel and mild trauma which happens when somebody is traveling in a vehicle, this leads to the loss of elasticity because of loss of because of dehydration. And that loss of elasticity leads to a tendency for the disc to crack. Cracks form in the disc gradually. And suddenly in an already dehydrated disc, when a sudden pressure is applied on the disc, either by, by account of lifting something very heavy, or when somebody is thrown up in a vehicle while he is traveling, the disc can suddenly rupture very dramatically. The disc is actually composed of a very soft interior portion that is known as the nucleus pulposus and which is surrounded by a fibrous tissue that is known as the annulus fibrosus. As the names denote, the external layer is fibrous in nature and that keeps the nucleus pulposus which is pulpy in nature intact. With dehydration, the annulus fibrosus loses its elasticity and leads to cracking. And when it cracks, when it is subjected to a sudden jerk or due to the trauma that happens, the internal core which is the nucleus pulposus protrudes through the cracked annulus fibrosis and this condition is known as a disc prolapse or a herniated disc. This is one of the most significant aspects of the degenerative disc disease. It is only when this disc prolapses that it starts causing problems. Till then, patients do not suffer from any sort of symptoms. Though the degenerative disc disease has been progressively happening, it causes symptoms like pain and so on and so forth only when it sort of prolapses like this. And this state of prolapsed disc is very much a part of the degenerative disc disease. Very often, people who have got this sort of a disc prolapse, they get relief from the symptoms within a short period of time. If they just take rest and then start getting into their normal activity, within a period of a month or so, many people recover back to normal. But in some patients, the, the problems are persistent. It can be ongoing for years together when the disc prolapsed is actually pressing on the nerve and it damages the nerve which is passing from the cervical or in the lumbar regions. And that is a cause of chronic problems associated with the neck, 
cervical vertebrae or to the lumbar vertebrae. It is in these sort of chronic situations that very often patients are advised to undergo surgery to remove the part of the disc that is actually herniated and which is pressing on the nerve in order to give relief. It is in this context that many people seek Ayurvedic intervention and that is a very strong area for Ayurveda where Ayurvedic treatment comprising of some internal medication as well as external therapies are extremely helpful in relieving the damage that happens to the nerve because of the compression due to the prolapsed or herniated disc. The herniated disc is present also in several patients even after two months of a patient who gets this problem and thereafter he doesn't have pain even in those cases the herniated disc is still there but once the nerve heals completely the patient is free from symptoms and problems. So this is the process that is actually improved with the Ayurvedic treatment. So we at Indian Arogya offer the whole range of Ayurvedic treatments integrated with modern physiology in order to completely help the patient suffering from chronic degenerative disc disease from getting for the, from the need to undergo surgery we are able to help them to be completely recovering from their symptoms and lead normal lives by integrating the Ayurvedic treatment along with modern physiotherapy. We also train patients on how to carry on with their exercises to keep the disc preventing the disc from degenerating further and in improving the strength of the muscles to hold the vertebrae coherently and to improve the mobility and flexibility of the vertebrae post the episode. So with these sort of treatments, patients suffering from degenerative disc disease are able to lead normal lives without the need to undergo surgery in most of the cases.